Hello everyone, so today's tutorial is all about free motion quilting. Great fun to do, especially for beginners. Um, you're going to need your darning foot if you have one. You can use an embroidery foot. Um, it's just, if you have a darning foot, it's much nicer to use. But either one will work. I'm going to need some sort of backing fabric. You're going to need your batting, which is your the fluffy fabric in the middle, a fluffy material in the middle. Uh, if you don't have actual quilt batting and you could use something like a, a piece of fleece or felt or something like that, you just want some sort of padding in the middle. Then for your top fabric, you can either use plain, plain color fabric that you can then draw on with water soluble fabric and erase it. Or if you have, um, uh, for example, I've got these, these um, gel prints that I've been doing. So those are also nice to work on, or if you've got a pattern, a fabric with a pattern, that also works really well. And the nice thing about this is that you don't need an embroidery hoop to do your free motion quilting. You can do it with just using lots of pins in your fabric, holding everything together. All right, let's begin. All right, so first you want to choose your colors for your background. Um, generally speaking, I prefer to use either all embroidery threads or all ordinary sewing cotton that can't really be fussy if I don't have because I don't have this color in embroidery thread and then I'm going to be doing the outline of the leaves in black so two for the um, various layers I've just got a plain white rayon that I'm using for the back my backing fabric then I've got some um, batting here and then I've got a gel plate print on top and I've got a kitten to help because we all know how well kittens and sewing go together So we're going to put in lots of pins um, we're going to start with just putting pins around the outer edge So one thing about, um, so this, if you've been following my previous tutorials, when it comes to the gel plate prints on fabric, um, I've used, I prefer, I find the best prints anyway, I get using a combination of acrylic paint and fabric medium. But that leaves like a sort of a painty feeling on top of the fabric, which although my fabric medium says it doesn't need to be ironed, if you iron it, you feel it, find it, it sort of sinks into the fabric a bit more and it gives a nice smooth feeling as opposed to the rough painted feeling. So if you are doing the acrylic paints, uh, acry sorry, the um, gel plate prints on the fabric, then definitely, definitely iron it before you start stitching onto it. You'll see it changes the whole feeling of the, of the print. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to be going around the outline of the leaves and then I'll be working on the background color. When you're doing the free motion quilting, um, you can choose, you can quilt everything, or you can leave some parts unquilted and those will be puffed up and then if you quilt on the back, you'll, you'll see. Anyway, you'll see as I, as I go what I mean. So for today's print, I'm just, for today's quilting, sorry, I'm just gonna be going around the outside of the leaves and then I'll be quilting on the the actual color part here in the background. Right, so I think that's enough pins to start with. I just want to check on the back to make sure there's no um, parts where your fabric's kind of um, trapped in any way, strange way. Yeah, don't be shy with the pins, use lots to start with and just remove them as you get to that section. That just helps with any fabric movement at the back because you're working with the layers. So you want to make sure that nothing moves around as you're working. Sorry for all the background noise if, the, if it's picking up on camera. It's an incredibly hot, muggy day today. Um, it's supposed to rain later, but it's really very humid. So I have to leave this window open or I can't be up here. Right, let's get the machine set up. Right, so I've got, I put a fresh needle on my machine. Um, yeah, you want to just 
every sort of eight to ten hours, six to eight hours of mine on this machine anyway, or eight to ten hours of sewing, you want to replace your needle. So I'm using um, a darning foot on my for the quilting. You can use an ordinary embroidery foot, just depending on the clearance that you've got on your machine. I happen to be using my embroidery foot on another machine, so I'm just using the darning foot. They work equally well. And I'm using a white thread in my bobbin. So, just to show you there. Okay, so I've set my machine up for the free motion quilting is very much like the free motion embroidery. In terms of your feed dogs, that's the fabric guides under your needle. They need to be down, they need to be disengaged, so you can move the fabrics as you like. Um, I'm using black thread to go around the outline of my leaf, and I'm getting attacked by my little one. And to start with, I'm just going to be going around the outer edge of the leaf print. Okay. So make sure your foot is down, it's sometimes difficult to tell with these um, spring loaded machine feet so just always make sure that the foot is down before you start stitching and as always you want to pull your thread to the top of your fabric but underneath the foot And then it's not essential but for quilting anyway I like to pull my threads to the back and just tie a knot especially when I'm going around the big air the big things like the leaves you can see here that the I've set the top tension to a number four on my machine so it's pulled the top thread down through to the bottom okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do the next two leaves and then I'll show you how I do the background Okay, so I finished the outline um, of the leaves. You can see that one is a bit strange, but that's just what the leaf looked like and how the print came out. So it makes it a little bit more fun. Right, let's start on the color. So for embroidery threads, um, you get this thread net thing. This you can get in most um, sewing shops. I have found some garlic has got these nets on it. The garlic nets can sometimes be a bit stiffer. Little one is busy eating my thing. Fight for my quilt here. Hey, get your claws out. There we go. Right, sorry about that. So. Okay. So when it comes to the um, 
net for the embroidery thread. I put mine double folded and then I put it on like that. So that way when you're stitching it's pulling down on your on the net and it's not getting caught in the edges there. All right now I'm just gonna start stitching in the light green sections over there and you can really do any design you want. Um, apparently I've got some recommendations over here. <laughs> right. So as before, pull both threads through to the top. Get the kitten involved. Okay. <laughs> okay. Coffee. Don't be no. <laughs> Alright, do a few stitches and then start taking out pins as you get to them. Um, yeah, like I say, you need to just figure out which design you want to do. I'm doing random swirls. And then at some stages I will do little leaves. Right, so I've done the two shades of green, quite similar in colour, but um, you can see there's a slight difference there. One's more of a limey green and a slightly darker green. And now I'm moving on to the sort of light blue sea green colour. I just thought I'd show you um, how to change your colours. Well, it's up to you entirely where you do your colour change. I like to start at the edge and that way um, you, can, you can trap the the ends in when you do your border, but that's again it's up to you. Um, so when you are starting, you want to just sort of do a few little stitches on top of them like that, just to st uh, make sure that the start of your thread is nice and secure. And you can cut those away. Then if you decided later that, that you want to stop stitching, for example, over here and start again on this side, somewhere, you know, somewhere else, over here or something, then that's when you need to leave enough thread to tie a knot at the back. But for starting on the if you're starting on the edge, um, then you can do a few securing stitches and then just clip your threads. So just to show you, I'm going to end here at the edge of this leaf. So I've kind of run out of space and I don't want to interfere with my stitching too much. So 
a little difficult to see with the light thread on the light background. Anyway, so you leave yourself enough thread to make a nice knot. You pull it through to the back. And if you just pull on this little thread, you'll see the bottom, well, top thread pops through to the bottom. Just get a pin and shove it in there. And just pull that through. And then knot the two together. And then trim it off. Don't I don't cut it all the way close to the fabric. I like to leave like one and a half, one yeah, between one and two centimeters of tassels, just to make sure it doesn't get sucked in again. So you can see that the thread, the bottom bobbin, bottom tension, shall I say, is pulling the thread through to the bottom, and you want that so that there's no white showing on the top of your work. Again, I have ironed this, and um, maybe it's my imagination, but it seems that even the colours get brighter when you iron it, the the, um, the prints. So this is the acrylic paint and fabric medium mix that I use to do these prints. So I really do recommend ironing it, even though it says on the bottle, that if, on this particular bottle anyway, that it's not necessary. I do recommend it. Okay, so we're going to start off in the same way. Um, put our, down our layers and lots and lots of pins everywhere. This time we're going to be stitching the, the detail on the actual leaves Let's themselves. Let's check the back just to make sure that none of the fabric has got trapped or anything like that but we're looking good. We'll just put in one or two more over here. Right. Let's get stitching. So, as always, make sure your presser foot is down. I said before, I'm just going to repeat it because I've made this mistake many times. It is difficult to see with these spring-loaded feet and also with the quilting because of the padding, whether your foot is up or down. So just always double check that before you start stitching. Okay. Right, so bring our threads to the top. And we set to straight stitch um, for quilting. So for quilting, I generally set my stitch length to a three or a four. It doesn't really matter because obviously our feed dogs at the bottom, the fabric guides at the very at the, underneath the needle, are down, so they're not guiding it. But what your stitch length does is it determines how fast your needle is going in and out of your fabric. So if you've got it on a zero then you know that your needle is going to be going very close together. Your stitches will be very close together. Whereas with the number four, there's a slight um, delay in the, you know, it's, it's stitches slightly slower. So when it comes to the free motion quilting, this is something that you, um, you want to have. And again, my little assistant is back to help us with the quilting. Right. Careful of the foot left. So when you're stitching a solid shape, um, it's often best, just depending on what you're stitching and how you're stitching it, but what is a good idea is to stitch the, from the middle out. And that way you don't risk going around the outside and then trapping and making little lumps of um, fabric underneath. So we're going to do that today. So this is um, especially important if you're doing like a spiral or something along those lines. But also for something like this leaf. 
because we're going to be going along the veins and we don't want to um, be creating weird lumps of fabric underneath. So, sort of start to see it now how this leaf has sunk into the fabric. And as before, we're going to pull our threads to the back and knot them on the back just to make sure. Even though I did do some securing stitches there, just to make very sure that nothing comes through. There's something very tasty on the fabric. Coffee, come on. Hey, give me a. Uh, it's mine. No, nope, it's mine. Okay. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to stitch this leaf and then we'll show you what it looks like once that's done. Right, so I've finished stitching both of the leaves. Um, it's kind of difficult to see on camera, but the effect is that the leaves then, the, anything that's got the detail sinks down into the fabric and then the rest of the fabric is puffy around it, the quilting anyway is puffy around it and it kind of um, accentuates it in the, in the opposite way to this piece where um, the leaves are lifted up and here they're sunken in. So it's two opposites um, but both create some sort of added highlights to the leaves. So this is the effect of just going around the outside of the leaves. I did this for a short this week. Um, so you can see that the leaves here are also puffy like this one, but they're not as highlighted as if you did um, stitch in the background or stitch in the leaves. So that's those three ways. And then there's one last little thing I want to show you. Okay, so again, I've got my layers. So the last little thing that I want to show you is how amazing this variegated thread is when you are quilting. So I'm just using the plain white bobbin and I've pinned my layers of fabric together. So hopefully you can see um, the different colours that it gets that gets created. So you can imagine if you're doing a big piece, um, how useful it is to create a variety and depth of it within your work using the variegated thread. And so I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial. Um, you can see some examples of the work here. So that's with the detail in the leaf. The back left puffy, this is the opposite, so the background is, is heavily stitched but the leaves are not. That's with just the outline being done, so it's highlighting but at the same time just subtly. And then that's the free motion quilting using variegated thread. So I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial. 
Um, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon for another tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.